What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to build a simple Hello World program in assembly. And I think this is a very important thing to do because you're going to see how different assembly is from all the other languages, even from C and C++. It's a very low level language and it's quite different from C, from Java, from Python, from C++, from all these languages that have a readable syntax. Because what you do in assembly is you actually have to manage registers yourself, you have to manage move instructions, push and pop instructions, everything has to be done by you. So we're going to build a simple Hello World program today. And I'm going to explain how it works in detail. So for that, we're going to get right into it, I'm going to switch the scene here. And we're going to start by opening up a new file. Now what you need to know is that I'm working on the Windows subsystem for Linux, the code I write today is going to be for Linux. So you can do it on Windows by using the Windows subsystem for Linux, I have a video on how to install it or you can use it on native Linux, but you cannot use it on native Windows, because assembly is not uh, platform independent, it is platform dependent. So this is why C is oftentimes called the portable assembly, because you basically have one C code that you can compile for different systems, whereas assembly has to be very uh, specific, it has to be suited for the system. And we're going to work with syscalls and these syscalls are not possible on Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new file, I'm going to use the Vim editor, or actually the Neo Vim editor for that you can use Notepad, Notepad++, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, whatever you want. I'm going to use Neo Vim, and we're going to create a file called Hello ASM. And uh, one thing that you want to do right away, if you're working with Neo Vim or Vim as well, is you want to enable the syntax highlighting. And for that, we need to set FT, which stands for file type or format type, I'm not sure and we have to set it to NASM, which is NASM, this is the type of assembly that we're going to write today. By doing that, you have the syntax highlighting that's necessary for today's code. So we're going to start with a basic structure here, we're going to define global underscore start, we're going to define a section that we're going to just call dot text. And we're going to define the start function here, if you want. And here we're going to put the instructions. Now, what we're going to do in Linux, or what we're going to do in assembly for Linux here is we're going to perform syscall. So I'm going to call at the end syscall. And this is going to perform a syscall. But there are many different syscalls that we can perform. And for that, what I recommend you do is you go to Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever you want, and you Google Linux syscall table. And you're going to see a couple of pages that explain this, uh, you want to make sure that you have the right version. So you want to have the right architecture. And what you see down here is that we have a lot of different syscalls, we have read, write, open, close, and so on. Many, many different functions, many different system calls that we can do. Uh, in this table, you can see it in a little bit more detail also with the parameters. Um, what's important is that each syscall has a number you can see here, for example, read has the number zero, write has the number one, and so on. So if I want to make a syscall for writing, which is what we're going to do, because we want to write hello world onto the screen, if we want to do that, we need to call the syscall one. However, in assembly, we don't just go ahead and say syscall one, this is not C, we cannot just say, okay, call the syscall function and pass one and pass a string that I want to print or something, we have to just make the syscall and which syscall is made depends on the content of the register. So if you go to uh, this page here, you're going to see that the right syscall has a number one, and it is determined by the content of RAX. So this is a register, the register RAX, it has to have the value one, when this register has the value one, the content one, when a syscall is made, we're going to do the right syscall. So in order to prepare the syscall for right, we're going to move into the RAX register, the value one, you can pass it as decimal, so you can do it like that, or you can do it like that 0x1 to pass it in hex. Uh, the only difference is that when you pass something like 10, you can do it like that. So you can say 10 in decimal, or you can say zero x a. So it doesn't really matter, you can do both. Now when you go to the table, you're going to see that we have parameters. So the right function has parameters arc zero arc one arc two, it doesn't have more. Uh, each function here has parameters, or most functions here have parameters. And these parameters determine obviously, what are we going to print or write, where are we going to write it to and so on. So the best thing that you can do is you can go to the man page here, and you can look at the C implementation, basically, 
Uh, you can see here that the first parameter is the file descriptor. So FD int, you can scroll down, I think, and the parameters should be explained somewhere. Um, yeah, there you go. File descriptor FD. This basically just uh, means where are we going to write this content to? And what you need to know, and you can Google that as well, is that one is the file descriptor for standard output. So for STD out. So if we want to print onto the screen, what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to pass one for STD out. So if we want to uh, print hello world onto the screen, we want to pass hello world as the buffer, we want to pass one as the file descriptor and the count is basically just the length of the string that we're going to print. So just a size, this is something that we need to do in C and in assembly. So this is what we want to do. So basically, in the RDI register, we're going to pass one for SD out. In the RSI, we have to pass a buffer with hello world. And in RDX, we need to pass a size. So for that, we're going to just go back into the code. We're going to say move into the RDI 0x1 as well. This is just for STD out. And now things get a little bit more complex because we need to work with variables. So we're going to open up a new section down here. And we're going to call it the data uh, data section. So here we're going to have the data that we're going to work with. And I'm going to define a new variable message msg. And for that, we're going to add a colon and we're going to call the DB instruction, which stands for as far as I know, define byte or define bytes. And what I do now is I just pass hello world here, like that, followed by zero x a what is zero x a you can look that up in a table in an ASCII table, I think this is just backslash n. this is just a line break, this is just the code, the encoded uh, symbol or the code for the symbol backslash n. So for a line break, this basically means in in C, hello world backslash n like that. Um, so we have this variable. Now what we can do is we can uh, move it into RSI like that. And then we're going to also define the message length. And this is going to be EQU. I'm actually not sure what EQU stands for. I just know it's a constant. Uh, and here we're going to type dollar dash message to get the length. So this is how you get the length of a string. This is how you define a constant basically. And this length, we're now going to store it um, into the RDX uh, register. So we're going to say message length here. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to do it dynamically, you can also just go ahead and pass uh, something like zero XC or zero XD. So you can also pass just the constant, but this is how you uh, how you can uh, calculate or get the length of the string. Now, we have prepared all the registers, let's go back to the table, you can see that we have one in racks, which means that we call write. Uh, we have the file descriptor one for SD out in the first parameter register, then we have the buffer, which is the message in RSI, and we have the size of the message in RDX. All we need to do now is we need to call, uh, we need to make a syscall. And that's basically it. So syscall, and this is going to trigger that this is going to use the content here to perform the right action. And what we want to do as well is we want to exit. Now let's go back to the table and look for exit. Uh, you can see here 60 is exit. This means that we're just exiting the program. And here we also have an error code zero means success one or anything else basically means that it didn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to move into our a x 60. Now what is 60 in hex? It is zero x three C again, you can just type 60, uh, 60 if you want to. Um, and we're going to pass into RDI the exit code zero. And then we're going to do a syscall. And that is actually it. This is how you build a hello world program in assembly. Now let's go ahead and compile this we're going to exit here. And we're going to uh, need to use NASM for that. So if you don't have it, you just say sudo apt install NASM like that. Let me just see that my camera is not blocking. Yeah, it's not blocking anything here. Uh, so this is how you install it. And uh, you can also do this with Pacman and all that. Uh, and then what we do is we say NASM or NASM dash F elf 64 dash O for output, we're going to store this into hello dot O. And the file that we're going to compile is the hello dot ASM file. 
Okay, we have a uh, problem, line 17. So I made a mistake, I guess. 17, message length. Uh, what did I mess up here? Do I need... I don't need semicolons. What is the problem here then? Is it really the length of the line? Because that's what I have in my prepared code. No, comma expected after operand one. Where do we, ex ah, there you go. Here we need a comma. And I think that is the problem. So I can actually go back and make this length. There you go. Now it, com uh, it compiled. Now we have to link it. So now if we go ls, you can see that we have hello.o. And what we need to do now is we need to say ld minus o hello, hello.o. And now what I can do is I can just say point slash hello. There you go. Hello world. So let's go through the code one more time. What we do is we pass or we store, we move into the register RAX1 to say this is going to be a write syscall. We look that up in the table. The first parameter is one for the file descriptor, so one for std out. Then we have RSI, which has the buffer. Here we pass the message that we have defined in the data section down here with defined bytes. We define hello world, followed by backslash n, a new line escape character. Uh, then we store into the RDX register the length that we get here. Then we do a syscall to perform the write, and then we exit with the syscall 60 and the error code zero. This is a simple Hello World program in assembly. Now we're actually done with building the Hello World program in assembly, but we're going to extend the functionality a bit so that we can learn a little bit more about syscalls in assembly. And for that, we're going to use a read syscall because we're going to change the program in a way that allows us to first input something before we print something. So we're going to input a message and this message is then going to be printed out onto the screen, not just a static hell world. And for that, we're going to obviously need a syscall read. So number zero here. And you can see that the parameters are actually the same as for write, but they work in a different way because here the file descriptor is for an input stream. So we're going to get data from that stream. We're not going to output onto that screen uh, stream. We're going to get from that stream. And because of that, we're going to pass zero, which stands for SCD in instead of SCD out. Uh, we're going to use a buffer as, um, as a place to store the information. And we're going to also have this size. So you can also go to the man pages here and read the description. It's basically what I just said. So we're going to actually copy that and paste it. And we're going to change this here to zero. So we're going to make the system call zero for read and as a as a file descriptor, we're going to also pass zero for std in. And here now we're going to actually just have a sample string test, for example. And down here, the message length is going to just be a constant. Uh, let's let's go with zero x two o, which is uh, two times 16, I think. Don't ask me about hex at the moment. Uh, whatever. So this is just uh, a significant size, it should be enough for a basic message like Hello World or what's up or something like that. And this is actually all we need to do. This is actually all we need to do because what we do here is we call the read uh, syscall with std in and we store the information here with that length. And then we call the write on the same um, on the same variable. So what is there is going to be printed. And that's all we need to do in order to have this effect. So we're going to again compile, we're going to link and then we're going to run. Now I can enter something like that. There you go. The program works. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.